you you want you asked uh, a question about uh, the uh, method uh yeah my my question was um so in uh you know teaching this timeless education or focusing on these timeless principles uh do you have a suggested method or a uh, thing that people can follow uh to come to understand these things themselves is there a, a type of framework that we can follow if we want to um understand these things ourselves yeah yeah i, I have been working on developing a kind of uh, pro process of development uh, that I've I've made some videos about that, and uh, the idea is that uh, I follow uh, the idea that a person first needs to be kind of ready. So I, I've mapped up certain steps that uh, I believe are are useful to know about, and and uh, the first thing is this uh, idea of, of finding uh, the the teaching and. Uh, and being having kind of the, the right men, mental attitude or mindset, be, being able to be receptive in the same way, and also not have unrealistic expectations. So, um, so I uh, I tend to begin with that, pointing that out, and then uh, and then finding the right guidance is always a bit tricky. I mean, people will have to decide for themselves whether or not uh, they feel my st stuff is true, or you know test it out and things like that. But I do have, uh, I try to in integrate uh, like the, the various uh, dimensions of the human being. So I view the human being, it's a bit simplified, but still it's it's very useful because in a way it's, it's, it is also an attempt to complexify more what people are since people tend to make the mistake that we are uh, just one thing like, uh, not that we are kind of divided. So, so we have the consciousness, the conscious aspect of, of, of ourselves. And then we have like the intellect with concepts and uh, thoughts. And then we have uh, an emotional dimension and a vital or sensory motor dimension. And then we have the physical body. So there's like five things that I think people should be conscious of when it comes to things like development like all of this needs to we need to pay attention to all of this both when we are trying to help or give advice to other people and when we're trying to develop ourselves or find out the truth <clears throat> about ourselves and or what we need and so yeah i think you can begin uh, with all of them at the same time or with with anyone you prefer but but i also have a kind of preferred what I think might be the most useful uh, order. And that is to begin with the higher part, with consciousness, with trying to become more attentive and, uh, and, and trying to become aware of, of like your own tendencies, observe yourself, become a kind of impartial witness to yourself. Like what am I feeling and why am I feeling that, this? And what do I believe and what do I think and why do I believe this and why do I think this? And, what what are things that have I have learned? What are things that have gotten into me from the outside, from the culture? What is it that, that I am simply imitating without really questioning? And what is it that might be might 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 have been there even if I was born in another culture? Like try to separate what is nature and what is culture, and, and those kind kind of things. And then obviously learning. Uh, working with the intellect, you you try to I guess study the things that I have written and that I talk about, and you can also apply this method of trying to reduce things to their essential, their essential components, and see how things tend to resemble each other. Uh, at um, when reduced to the to the essentials, so for example, um, morality and health you know what kind of morality is moral if it doesn't lead to health and what kind of health i mean wh why would something be healthy if it is also not in a sense moral so if 
by thinking about it that way uh, and going deep enough into something, you, re- you realize that at, at the essential aspects, both morality and health uh, and even education, everything become, becomes the same thing, like, or it should be the same thing, you could say. So, yeah, so there are various approaches there. And every, every approach has, like, you can take three, three different types of... Um, practices i mean you can use this idea of simply following an established model and that would be something like studying what uh, what i have written like you follow a model uh, and that also comes to things like meditation and uh, and developing yourself in uh, in how to handle your emotions like if you follow certain established models for how how we, how we imagine uh, a functional person feels like they feel not angry then i guess you can try to discipline yourself not feeling angry and in that sense you kind of eventually it becomes like a habit so you you become less angry that way but that is not the only method and perhaps not even the best method but another one is to simply follow follow what you feel and what you your own kind of desires and your own tendencies and learn about yourself by living out your own kind of peculiarities and in the realm of of uh, of the intellect you you question things on your own and you seek on your own and you try to put together things on your own and i believe that if you are really go really hardcore into this you will arrive at something similar to to what i believe is uh, this solid foundation of uh, of metaphysics, of finding something permanent in an impermanent world, such as that everything is always moving, or everything is uh, made up of contrasts, everything has its opposite, and things like that. Uh, but you can also take the approach of studying, um, perhaps not not just me, but you can study, you know, other religions, other religious systems like Taoism and the Yin Yang symbol. You kind of have those same kind of principles or parameters to work from simply in that very simple symbol and then you um you when you work with emotions i find this is more difficult than uh, simply trying to be conscious or um or learning um the truth about reality and it has to do with um yeah not reacting when you are hurt and things like that, not take things too seriously. And uh, basically you control your will. You are, you are able to act in a way that is not automatic. And uh, so I refer to that as, that as training your will. And when it comes to things like love, developing love or the capacity to love, I tend to look at it very, very pragmatically, like uh, from the starting point or from the outset, I don't believe people really are capable of love because love is often confused with a kind of partiality like oh i love this we all love something it doesn't make people special um so it's it's more like i mean i think jesus jesus had a good point he was a kind of a master of love he he, he knew this that if you love your own people or uh, your own friends and family, that doesn't make you special. You, you have to even love your enemies. Then you show that you you are you are using your own will, your own willpower to love something you would normally or or automatically not love, so to speak. <clears throat> so yeah, I tend to talk about developing will. Uh, it's very useful uh, rather than simply go on about love because. So sometimes certain people go on very much about uh, we, we need love or everything is already love uh, and it become, becomes a bit too uh, I don't think people understand how seriously difficult it is to really work with love in a kind of useful way and then uh, we have the vitality or the vital dimension which has to do with authenticity we need to become more authentic and also as a kind of protection against repression and authoritarian systems and kind of mob uh, mentalities which is often it often feeds on fear so we need to become more brave in 
in standing for our own opinions and being more honest with ourselves and being honest also it it gives us it gives us substance like we feel like we're really living and are being ourselves and it also tends to give us more energy because if when we're uh, when we feel the, uh, forced to put on a mask and things like that it it tends to drain energy it's like we know we're, we're being fake we know we are being kind of overly careful and and worried and that always drains energy and things like that and of course all of this is supported by the right knowledge and so all of this kind of work together and kind of are connected and reinforce each other is something weak it tends to cross create problems in the other sphere so if you have weak ideas and, and not really know what's what's true or what, what you can rely upon in the world and your emotions also becomes less controllable you become more anxious and things like that and Perhaps you become less yourself or become more fearful about daring to be yourself and things like that. And then the final uh, layer is the physical body. And I don't tend to focus that much on it because there's already a lot of information out there. You know, eating healthy, doing uh, a bit of normal exercise, uh, kind of ordinary stuff. Uh, So yeah, uh, did that answer your question? Um, to some extent, so <clears throat> um, basically what what I got out of that, I'll just kind of sum it up. Um, as far as a method, um, it sounds like kind of your first approach or first thing that you would suggest is to um, work on becoming more conscious of uh, essentially what you currently are. Um, in the sense of, you know, what kind of thoughts are you having regularly? What kind of emotional patterns do you have? Um, where are you getting the different beliefs um, and, you know, um, <clears throat> conceptual frameworks that you have? Where where are you getting these from? Are these automatic, you know, things you grabbed from your culture? Or are these things that you examined personally? Um, so that's one part. And then... Um, you spoke about, you know, working, so next with the intellect, you know, of course, learning, um, putting time into understanding a model such as your own, you mentioned, um, so, you know, that's something that someone could do. And then next, I think you talked about emotions. Now, I had a question here, um, so on the emotional level it it seems like you're talking a lot about um a way to kind of go against the the emotions in a sense with will and i was just curious um how you work that in with being authentic because that was kind of the um the last thing that you mentioned other than you know working on the physical body which like you said i mean there's already a lot of information out there on that and it's pretty self-explanatory so how do you kind of um combine um developing more authenticity with also what at least to me sounds like kind of um you know in intentionally kind of changing or changing the reaction to emotions yeah Uh, well with emotions i don't consider emotions to be entirely well i wouldn't say i think i don't think the word genuine or not genuine really applies because they are both genuine in the sense that they happen but they are also it's better to think of emotions similar to your to, to thoughts like you are not your thoughts and in the same way you are not your feelings feelings is something that you can to an, to an extent control because they are something that are, that are actually not really an inherent part of you they don't have to be an inherent part of you i mean i guess i don't know if there is some kind of if there can exist some kind of physical imbalance you know, I, I've heard that there is uh, some kind of genetic predisposition to depression. I don't know how that, if that is connected to emotions. 
a lot. Um, but um, in a lot of cases, emotions are unnecessary. There are many emotions that people feel that are unnecessary, and it can be a valid practice to express your emotions completely, but it should be done in a kind of controlled environment. I don't recommend people go out into the into society and simply do certain practices, but um, but. Um, yeah, I, I do think if you have been hurt, it can be a good idea to try to purify yourself by expressing it. It can be in a controlled environment or on your own or in a kind of work of art or something like that. Uh, write, write about it, making a biography where you kind of cleanse yourself by telling everything. And um, but uh, but emotion is something that I tend to look at as something that is kind of foreign, foreign or something that can can come and go, similar to thoughts, uh, something that does not necessarily belong to us. It is something that happens, kind of like a, a reaction. Um, and certainly, sometimes feeling certain emotions feels good, but. Um, Yeah, so, so I tend to think of it as the authentic part has to do with, with a kind of drive, a kind of uh, natural dispos disposition, which I don't really regard to be exactly the same as emotions. And I think that... Uh, I think that you tend to feel good emotions if you, kind of, if you do what you feel is, is right. For you, um, and sometimes emotions can get in a way, can also get in the way of you being yourself because you feel emotions of anxiety and fear. There are many qualities to emotions, and I, I, I didn't, I didn't used to think of it this way. But after studying the limbic system, uh, they, they tend to define the limbic system, which is like the center of emotions in the brain. They define the central emotions or emotion in the limbic system as, as, a, as anxiety. And I don't view anxiety as a kind of, um, you know, it's not an emotion you want to feed into too much. Uh, it's like, I, I, I know why it's, it's, it's there to, to protect us, obviously. I mean, it, 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 sh it should serve some function, but I think that it can take control over us and kind of run, run amok and um, yeah, take, it's like, it's not good if we are controlled by our emotions rather than we being able to control emotions more. So in, you, simply by that phrase, you know, that you hear people say sometimes that he was overcome by his emotions or she, she let her emotions get the better of her. That's like, that implies simply by listening to the language that we do tend to think of emotions as something outside of us, even though it is within that isn't exactly us, but something that kind of possesses us. So I guess that's how I would think of it. Okay, so <clears throat> um, kind of what I get from that now after hearing you talk about it and kind of actively thinking about it while, while you are, it's, it's essentially, you know, when we talked about kind of the first step or two in, in this, you know, method, you might call it, um, you know, it was first becoming conscious of, you know, different patterns um, or really just really the whole trying to become more conscious and more attentive to what is actually uh, occurring within yourself. Um, but then next was, you know, applying that to um, the intellect. And uh, really, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't see much of a difference as far as authenticity is concerned in um, analyzing and, um, you know, finding a thought pattern or belief that isn't beneficial and trying to reduce that. It's uh, doing that on the emotional level is um, very similar. Um, it's basically just um, identifying um, something that is, is limiting you and your goals and what you're trying to become and um, 
yeah, just actively trying to reduce that um, without necessarily, you know, eradicating it completely. It's not to say that, you know, you, you never experience anxiety or fear, but rather you try to focus it um, on, you know, only having that feeling when it is actually beneficial. Because uh, there are obviously times when anxiety or fear um, can can help, but um, I I think at this point um, humanity has kind of come to where most of our n- normal needs are met to the extent in which an em- an emotion like uh, very strong fear or anxiety uh, isn't as beneficial as it used to be. Uh, in a situation where, you know, let's say, you know, you only have uh, a food storage for, you know, one or two days, um, having fear or anxiety over a situation such as that is much different than having, you know, anxiety that, you know, one of your coworkers doesn't love you, you know, and isn't just thrilled with you. I mean, it, it doesn't make uh, sense to have that same level of emotional response um, in like those two different situations. There's a there's a different level of kind of severity uh, of the actual situation. Um, so there should, you know, in theory, you know, it would be best to have, you know, a different response in those situations emotionally. Yeah, and uh, I would also say that, uh, you know, thoughts can sometimes influence your emotions. The the, the worst kind of emotions is those that are kind of cultural, that that, that are not even, yeah, that I refer to as kind of unnecessary. It's like you believe something and you you defend that, even though it isn't true or it's like, you know, if if you can if you regard something as sacred uh, and then uh, someone uh, insults the thing that you that you consider sacred and you become mad and you lash out or you even kill somebody it's like if you were an innocent child who weren't brought up in a culture to consider something like that sacred then you would not feel those negative emotions you would not act that way it's like a, a kind of man, manufact. It's like manufacturing. A lot of cultures manufacture negative people, in, uh, negative emotions in people by feeding them certain ideas about this is important and don't let anyone insult this. Often honor cultures have that. Uh, on honor cultures, uh, like no, no, you should not allow anyone to shame you or shame your family and things like that. Uh, those kind of attitudes tend to kind of manufacture a lot of unnecessary negative emotions, if you will. Uh, nationalism comes to my mind as kind of an example of that, too. Um, Naturalism. No, nationalism. Oh, nationalism, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, that kind of attitude that, you know, you're, you're, you're raised as if your country or people are somehow... Um, you know, innately superior um, to everyone else and that, you know, you must focus on them over everyone else. Um, That can definitely breed a lot of the responses and stuff that you're talking about, too. So, yeah, Uh, I agree. And so that is the the main thing about working, Uh, at least in the beginning, I think that Trying to get rid of all those unnecessary and culturally, culturally manufactured uh, ideas that leads to unnecessary negative emotions. That's like the first and primary things. And then the more, uh, I mean, the worst kind of, the, the most difficult thing to work with are those negative emotions that are in some ways legitimate. Legitimate. I do think it is necessary to control control yourself even when something really bad happens, even when something that is really unjust happens. It is always beneficial to to be able to control yourself, but it is certainly more difficult when something really 
bad happens to you. Yeah, for sure. Um, 